<clears throat> and let me point the finger at myself here and and level with you guys and just be straight up honest. Just be straight up honest with you guys. A lot of you and uh, listen, a lot of you guys might not like might not like what I have to say, but deep down you know it's true. <laughs> it's no secret. It is no secret that I do not like O'Shea Duke, Duke Jackson. In my opinion, O'Shea is a two-faced sellout who only cares about the black community when he is in front of a camera. You're a liar. You're a liar. You're dusty. Musty, crusty. Now, some of you might disagree with my opinion of him, and that's okay. I'm not going to pretend that I know everything about him. <clears throat> but based on five plus years of observing the way he moves, his actions have led me to draw those conclusions. We only even mention you if you're roasting sisters. Anthony and his goons have openly bragged about having my channel taken down several times, and O'Shea uses it as content. Guess who Donovan blames for getting his channel taken down again, or Donovan Sharp's channel has been deleted, and guess who's mad? As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, Anthony actually commented on a, on a, on a video that O'Shea did about me pertaining to him. There it is on your screen. Anthony made, Anthony wrote a big old paragraph insulting me and O'Shea liked the comment. He, he talked all this shit, blah, 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 blah. And O'Shea liked the comment. This is where my assessment of him being two-faced comes into play. Because a few years ago, O'Shea told me on the phone, he doesn't trust white people. He does not trust white people, and he would never, ever, ever work with them. He told me. There are also, there are also several screen grab text conversations where O'Shea verifies what I just said. There's, listen, there, there is a full video. You guys, can, you, guys can, you guys can go and look at that. It's on my channel. I actually, po I actually posted it recently, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, a week and a half, week or two ago. So he doesn't trust white people and said that if Anthony ever tried to do a Black 21 convention, he's going to, quote, have problems. O'Shea's words, not mine. Again, I did a complete I did a complete video on this. This is when he tried to dog me and said I tried to sell out the black community. Nice hitting me up all night last night. Um, and, uh, you know, listen, to be honest with you guys, uh, I knew this day would come. Um, O'Shea, uh, he seems to beef with everybody uh, eventually, um, you know, I, mean, I don't have to go down the list of names, but you know, he's just beefing with Alan Roger Curry. It's angry, man. It's obs It's always, it's always something. It's always somebody. And so I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit here and act like I I'm, I'm surprised or shocked by this. It did come a little earlier, uh, than I expected. Um, I didn't expect him to go and, you know, roast me for two hours after I shouted at him out and complimented him you know, on my show. Uh, but like I said, I knew eventually this day would come. I've never said anything bad about O'Shea. I've never done anything to him. Uh, but all he needed was for me to say his name and he was all over me. Um, uh, basically. So, you know, and listen, man, I'm not one to get into these beefs and response videos and, and all this other kind of stuff, because I'm just not that good at it. I mean, I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm not good at roasting, going back and forth with people. Um, I tried it once with turd flinging monkey. That wasn't, that was an embarrassment because I, <laughs> I'm just not good at it. Um, I'm good at, I'm good at content creation. So <clears throat> I'm not on here. I'm not, I'm not doing this to roast O'Shea. I'm not going to talk a bunch of junk about him. I'm not going to egg him on. The reason I'm doing this is because I heard a few things on his video that are simply untrue. Um, I'm going to state my side of the case. Hopefully I'll be able to clear the record. Nothing I'm going to talk about. Well, most of the things I'm going to talk about, they're not going to be hearsay. I'm actually going to show you guys evidence uh, that some of the stuff that he said was uh, was untrue. Um, and listen, man, I don't have anything against O'Shea. You know, listen, maybe he remembered things differently. Maybe he was confused. Maybe something got lost in translation. I don't know. Uh, but none of that matters. Um, you know, the point is, is that he what he said was incorrect. Uh, a lot of what he said was incorrect and factually inaccurate. Um, he was just flat out dishonest with you. Does that make him a bad guy? I don't know. I don't care. But um, so anyway, let's just go ahead and get to it. So number one, O'Shea didn't fire me from the Negro Manosphere. He didn't fire me from the brother pill. Um, he just changed my password, right? Like he never told me, hey, Donovan, by the way, you're fired. We never had we never had a formal conversation. He never he he just stopped requesting articles. That's what it was. That's really the equivalent of a boss just kind of disabling uh, an employee's key card, right? 
taking away their parking spot, changing their computer passwords, and kind of hope that they get the message. Yeah, but listen, I, I mean, as an employee, I guess if I can't get into the building, I guess I'm fired. O'Ne- O'Shea never told me I was fired. But listen, if that's what he thinks, if that's what you guys want to think, that's fine. I don't care. Um, I just wanted to set the record straight uh, on that. And it, it, listen, if that's the way he wants to characterize it, that's fine. I don't care. That's not important to me. But O'Shea never told me I'm fired. Number two, um, and I didn't watch the whole video, right? So listen, there is some stuff on there that I that I may have missed. I'm just going based on what I've heard and what I've seen. I probably watched about seven minutes of the video, so I'm not going to go through this line by line and all that nonsense. Number two, um, uh, O'Shea said that Roosh never paid me uh, when I wrote for Return of Kings. Guys, that's 100% false. So if you guys look at your screen, and again, I'm doing this just to clear my name here, guys. There you go. There it is. Roosh V via PayPal. I took screen grabs of all of my, and these are from, these are from way back in 2013, 14, and 15. There you go. Of course, I have to cover up my real name so I don't dox myself. But yes, and listen, I mean, I could have gone up and, I mean, I could have, there's a Christmas bonus he sent us one year. Um, I was, you know, I'm not going to go and screen grab every single payment he made, but yes, Roosh 100%. There is Return of Kings October distribution. There is December payment, et cetera, et cetera. Roosh 100% paid me to write for Return of Kings. Uh, that's all there is to it. I don't know why. I don't know why O'Shea would tell you that he didn't. But those are the receipts. Um, listen, O'Shea and I. When when O'Shea and I talked for the very first time, he asked me flat out, "Hey." What does Roosh pay you to write for Return of Kings? I told him what he pays me, and O'Shea said, all right, let's come to an agreement on XYZ. So, again, this when he said Roosh never paid you, guys, this is a flat-out lie. Okay, O'Shea lied. He was dishonest about that. There's the receipts. There's the conversation. All right. Um, number three. Uh, this was a pretty big one for me. I never tried to undercut O'Shea or to put on a Black 21 convention or put an event, uh, you know, pull off an event uh, behind his back. This is what happened. Late last year, Anthony Johnson uh, of 21 Studios, he floated the idea of possibly doing a a Black 21 convention. And when he did, um, hang on a second, I'm going to pull this up too. Now, <clears throat> when he did, what I, my, immediate, my immediate instinct was to tell O'Shea, right? I wanted to tell O'Shea, hey, listen, man, somebody's trying to get out of here. And I'm cool with Anthony. I have nothing. That, I mean, I'm cool with Anthony Johnson, 21 convention, ride or die, whatever. But I was cool with O'Shea, too. So here's what happened. And, and I hate to do this screen grab stuff. But again, when when people just tell outright, you know, untruths, lies about you, like this is what has to be done. So let me pull this up. <sighs> so here was O'Shea's response. And for those of you listening on the replay, um, I'm just going to read it out loud. So as soon as, oh, here we are, December 8th, 2018. All right, perfect. All right, well, there's the date. This is, and this is via Facebook Messenger. I said, quote, Anthony Johnson wants to do a Black 21 convention. He's shooting for 2020. O'Shea's response was, tell Anthony Johnson to stay in his place. Then he continues, if he tries for a Black 21 convention, I can assure you it will be problems. Then he said, quote, that's why I don't fuck with these white boys, always trying to cut a, cut into an N-words market. Right. So after that, um, we had a we had, dude, we were on the phone for like maybe an hour and a half. And I'm not going to tell you guys what was said on the phone call because I don't have any way to prove what was said. I'm not going to base this on hearsay. Um, we got loud with one another. But in the end, we agreed, hey, you know what? Let's try to pull off this this black 21 convention. Now, in the back of my mind, I didn't think O'Shea was really going to do it. I don't know why I didn't think he was going to do it, but he had never done or said anything to lead me to believe that he was genuinely interested in doing a Black 21 convention. But I said, you know what? Maybe I'm wrong. Let me just let me just try and get this out. Um, now, during the phone call, and, and I hate to tell you about what happened on the phone call because there's no way for me to prove it, but listen, you can choose to believe it or not. I told O'Shea, man, I said, look, Anthony Johnson is putting on a 21 convention in Poland. I said, O'Shea, that's in your backyard. 
dude, dude, I'll I'll talk with him. I'll get you into the 21 convention in Poland. You guys, he can he can show you the ropes. He can tell you, and because Anthony's done this for now 12, 13 years, if anybody can show O'Shea the ropes on how to put on an event like this, it would be Anthony. I said, look, dude, let let you know he's gonna be right in your backyard, dude. He'll let you, dude. He'll he'll be more than happy to let you tag along. Anthony's never had any problem with anybody in that regard. Um, but O'Shea expressed to me that he was not interested in working with Anthony and I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. Again, I can't, I'm not going to say what was said or what wasn't said because again, this is hearsay. Uh, you're just gonna have to take my word for it. Um, but that wasn't enough. Okay, fine. I said, all right, you know, we want to do this on our own, but the point is guys, there was no utter undercutting. There was no backstabbing. There was no planning behind, behind his back. Okay. As soon as Anthony floated the idea of the 21, con- uh, the black 21 convention to me, I immediately told O'Shea because I figured O'Shea would be the guy to do it first. So here's how the conversation went. And I was excited, right? So I said, okay, check it out. We could bring in Kevin Samuels to talk about style, Brandon Tatum and Anthony Brian Logan to talk politics, Alan Roger Curry to talk about game, Lucario and Dynas to talk about social issues, right? Like this is, you know, as you guys can see, I wanted to do this together. Okay. Um, O'Shea said that I was trying to, I was basically going to do this all on my own and bring him on as a consultant. That's not what the, what this was. I wanted to do this with him. So, and I continued, this was, this is basically a one-sided conversation. And by the way, um, this was a three-way conversation between myself, uh, O'Shea and, and LAR movement. So I said, another one we could do is you might be a Pookie or you might be a Pookie or Ray and don't know it. Um, I was just, I was coming up with ideas. I said, we could also bring in Steve, the Dean to talk about family and marriage. And I was, and you guys can see the enthusiasm. I said, dude, we got all kinds of talent. Then LAR movement says, listen, I think it has to do. I think it has more to do with us doing things for ourselves. It may be a nice gesture, but we have to do it. Um, then I said, okay, we're going to do it ourselves. I said, and then I continued with the ideas. I said, dude, we've got dudes from the Sunday rumble who would do it. And all kinds of other people. We've got the guys for sure. I even continued. I said, listen, we can make this a weekend event and bring in like 15 or 20 speakers. I wanted to do this. And so, um, so LAR says, what I mean is we preach of funding our own agenda agendas. That would be a contradiction. I said, I don't understand. I don't, I forget exactly what we were talking about there. Um, but LAR said it has to do with self-agency. Part of the message is doing for self, whether we succeed or fail. It has to be all about, it has to be about us working together and working within the group and for the group. Okay, perfect. Right. I said, that makes sense. So who will our speakers? speakers be then LAR said that's to be determined when we set up our own convention I said we should start recruiting guys now then if we want this thing to happen next year we got to get guys on board um LAR said I think we need a plan before anything else happens I said 100% agree guys you guys can see that I'm being cooperative here right I wasn't going behind anybody's back I wasn't planning this was all within the chat um LAR said I think we need a plan before anything happens I said 100% agreement but that plan needs to be discussing who we'd like to speak at the event LAR says, true. I'm thinking on the fly right now because I just woke up. He says, give me a few days. I'll come up with a plan. I said, all right, cool. I got you. I said, in the meantime, I'll start looking at venues. And this is exactly what I did, guys. I started calling. Listen, I was excited, man. I said, we'll plan the city, the days, the times. And I said, listen, booking a venue, it's a headache. But if we have a plan, it'll be easier. Then I said, you guys can see on the screen, my brother has a few connections in Atlanta. So I will talk to him later today. Guys, I was 100% on board. Had a brother in Atlanta who had some connections. I was going to try to reach out to him to get this thing started. Uh, LAR was cool. He said, okay, O'Shea, what do you think? Talk to you later. Didn't hear from O'Shea. O'Shea, I continued to brainstorm. Guys, I said, yo, and Minister Jap, he'd be a great speaker. Um, I don't know how much, I think it was like maybe the next day. I actually called my brother and I had a talk with him and I, and I found out that he doesn't have the connections uh, in Atlanta that I thought he did. So I sent a message to the group. I said, yo, just got off the phone with my brother. He doesn't have the hookup at the Atlanta convention center anymore, but he's going to check around to see if he can pull some strings at a hotel, see if we can get a ballroom or a conference room. It's probably better this way anyway. Um, because we could stay at the hotel we're having the convention at, meaning we save money on transportation, Uber, et cetera, and everything starts and stops on time. If you think another city would be better, let me know. But I'm thinking Atlanta because it's the de facto black Mecca, and my brother has connections out there. Guys, you can clearly see that there is nothing seedy or shady going on. I'm not saying, all right, O'Shea, I'm going to put this thing on, and I just want you to be... No, I'm asking for the ideas. I'm trying to plan this thing. Then, of course, I went on to say that my brother's not a red pill guy, supports black...
yeah, so I can trust him, blah, 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 blah. Then right here, if you guys look at the bottom of the screen, I said, real talk, man. I said, quote, I'm willing to put up some of my own money. I'm willing to put some of my own money up to help this thing happen, man. I, and I was, dude, I was a dude. I was a hundred percent on board. I said, I think it's important for us to be seen doing this on our own. Right. And then LAR came in and said, that would definitely be promising. Let's just hash it out as a group. I said, yeah. Then I said, I can't put up any more than 3K, but every little bit counts. Guys, I was willing to put up $3,000 of my own money to make this happen. And I made everyone aware of this. There was no back shady deals. There was nothing. There was nothing like that. Like this was all on the up and up. So now, now O'Shea wants to chime in. He says, well, we, we, we got the people to get the money and that's not the issue at all. I said, okay, solid. I said, we need to reach out to Brandon Tatum, Anthony Brian Logan and minister Jap. Those guys would be game changers. O'Shea said the presenters also that's easy. I was like, cool, man. Then O'Shea said, yeah, we got it under control. They know we got it. Stand by LAR movement. So now I'm starting to think, okay, is he trying to cut me out of this thing? So I told him straight up, I get the impression that you don't want my help with any of this. Guys, this is important because a lot of guys will just start making assumptions. I'm not that kind of person. If I have a problem or if I think something is a myth, I'm just going to ask you, hey, I get the impression that you don't want my help because that was the impression I'm getting. Guess what? That was my bad right? O'Shea said, no, nah, man, just send an LAR movement some money for, I guess, his contrib contributions on the brother pill. Um, I said, if that were the case, I'd, I'd like to at least participate in the event, right? And O'Shea said, that's why I said standby. He did a Patreon video, Patreon video for me, right? I said, I didn't even see that. Okay. And I'm, and I'm continuing to be excited. I'm like, listen, I've got ideas, man, right? Then O'Shea says, no, of course, bro, we gonna do this. I said, good. Guys, nothing about, guys, I even volunteered my own money for this, right? Let me pull this down, okay? Nothing about that interaction, nothing about that interaction says that I was trying to go behind anybody's back or undercut somebody or use O'Shea as just a consultant while I run the show. No, I, I wanted to do this with O'Shea, Right. I even wrote an article on the Negro Manosphere um, entitled uh, what the black manosphere could learn from the white manosphere. And I encouraged O'Shea to do a black 21 convention. I'll even show you that. Hold on a second. Is that it? Nope, that's not it. Hang on. Give me a second here. There it is. So the very last paragraph, I says, we also happen to have a guy who has an eye for talent, who knows how to generate an audience as well as the knowledge and know how to generate the resources to pull something like this off. Let's hope he puts something in the works to make it happen. So that was a call to action for, o for O'Shea to say, hey, you know what? They put on the 21 convention in the quote unquote white manosphere. Let's let's flex, you know, let, let, let's flex some black muscle and do this thing on our own. Now. Personally, now this is just my opinion. You guys can agree or disagree. I don't think O'Shea ever wanted to do a Black 21 convention, nor do I think he's interested. I don't think he ever intended on doing it. O'Shea talks a lot about it. Every time O'Shea, every time the 21 convention comes around, O'Shea starts talking about the 21 convention Black Edition, but he's never done anything to actually plan it. At least not that I've seen. I don't know. Maybe, listen, man, I could be wrong. He may actually want to do it, but I doubt it. And listen, if he proves me wrong, great. I'll be the first to come on air and be like, yo, O'Shea, my bad. I was wrong. I didn't think you wanted to do it. But I was wrong. But no, I don't think I'm wrong. There's, I, I don't think O'Shea has any intention on putting on a, I'm putting on a Black 21 convention. That's just my opinion. You can agree or disagree. Uh, so O'Shea, I'm talking to you here now. Okay, it's your move. If you're going to do the Black 21 convention, then do it. Quit talking about it. So I guess we'll see what happens. Um, number four, we're going to get into the reasons why I left the Black Manosphere and Black YouTube, and the reasons are exactly what I said in the video. Okay, it was just too much in-house hate, man. That, that's just all there was to it. And don't get me wrong, man. Most of the guys in, in on Negro Manosphere and on the Brother Pill, most of the guys were supportive, but there was just two. Like I said, we all have haters, but the percentage of haters when I was doing the Brother Pill and doing Negro, it, it just got too much. And you, if you guys want to know about the video, you guys can go back there and see that. You can agree or disagree. I don't really care. Right. But the other reason is that I was just running short on time, guys. Like I'm a, like I was on the air for two hours a day already, Monday through Friday. And then I was doing the brother pill on Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays. And then I'm doing the red man group on Saturdays. OK, it, like, dude, I even told O'Shea this. Right. I told the brother pill audience that it was my last day. So that's why I left. O'Shea didn't fire me from the brother pill. I told him that it was my last day and he was cool. That at least that's what I thought. Now, 
There were some other things that O'Shea said in the video that weren't true, but listen, I can't prove that they aren't, and I'm not going to insult your intelligence with a bunch of hearsay. Um, what it comes down to is that just because he, just because O'Shea says something doesn't make it true. That's all, the, that, that's all there was to it. He talked a bunch of shit about me. I haven't seen the whole video. I don't care. But fr from what I understand, just right there, there were two things that he said about me that I have just proven unequivocally to be untrue. Now, O'Shea has very strong opinions of me. That's cool. That's not against the law, right? I don't agree with all of his opinions of me, but it is what it is. I can't control another man's thoughts or actions, right? If anybody watching shares his opinions of me, that's fine, guys. Dude, that's totally cool. I'm not for everybody, and everybody's, and everybody's not for me. Nobody is liked by everybody, and that's perfectly fine. But if you are going to have an opinion of me, good or bad, I want your opinion to be rooted in, in facts. Not hearsay or a two-hour rant by someone who was complimented by the guy he was talking noise about, Right? Like, I just, I just don't understand why it, it, and, and to me, maybe there's always been sort of a deep seated resentment between O'Shea and me. I don't know. I'm not going to speculate. I don't care. I don't care about the why I care about the what, but as far as what he says, but as far as what O'Shea says to me from a factual standpoint, guys, you got to take what he says with a grain of salt. He said, I tried to undercut him and go behind his back to do a 21 convention black edition, not even close to true. As you guys can see, he said, Roosh wasn't paying me to write for him. Clearly that was not true. Right. Now, him firing me from negromenosphere.com, I guess you could characterize that. Any, you know, listen, if you want to think he fired me, that's fine. I don't care. It, O'Shea, if, listen, fine, you win. You got the W, you fired me, all right, I look bad. I, whatever, I don't care, right? But there was never a formal conversation where he said, Donovan, you're fired. Or, Donovan, you're not writing for me anymore. He just changed my credentials and locked me out. If, if you think that's a firing, that's perfectly cool, whatever, do you, right? Um... But but what I said about him, and I said on my video, I said, O'Shea Duke Jackson is as good as they come. I even thanked him for allowing me on my platform. So I just don't understand why he would rant about me for two hours. And I'm, I'm sure he'll do a response video to this and try to make me look bad. Um, and I'm not going to respond to his response. This is this is the final word. Guys, I'm not good at this. I suck at this. I'm not playing the dozens. I'm not roasting people. I don't. This is I'm just not good at it. Listen, this is O'Shea's arena. If I get down and roll around in the mud with O'Shea, guess what? O'Shea is going to win. That's just all there is to it. Um, if it's a writing contest or a speaking contest, I'll wax his ass. But as far as this arena is concerned, like this is. I'm, I'm, I'm playing a road game here. This is not my territory. So this is going to come off as awkward and this and that and the other. And I'm sure O'Shea is going to come out with 10 other videos, pointing out 10 other things about Donovan. But again, take what he says with a grain of salt. I've already proven that at least two of two of the things that he said to me, said about me are just untrue. You cannot deny that. Um, but like I said, whatever, what's done is done, right? As far as roasting me for two hours, it's not something that I would do. Right. But I'm not him and he's not me. I don't care. It doesn't matter. But at the end of the day, guys, I got nothing against O'Shea. Right. It, 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 he did right by me. O'Shea, he always paid me on time. He kept me busy with the articles and the ebooks. Right. It, listen, man, to keep it all the way real, the money was a nice little side hustle. And I greatly appreciate that. But let's not get things twisted here. O'Shea did not discover me. OK. I had written nearly 100 articles. 100 paid articles for return of kings when he contacted me o'shea duke jackson is not responsible for my success i am okay right listen listen yes he gave me a platform and yes it helped but being associated with o'shea didn't make me and it didn't break me yes he suggested that i get on youtube that was just my own idiocy. I didn't, oh, well, you mean YouTube is the best place to get discovered? Who knew? That was my stupidity. But guys, guess what? O'Shea Duke Jackson isn't the only man on the face of the earth that knows about YouTube. If he hadn't told me about it, I can assure you someone else probably would have. But he's not, listen, all of these studio upgrades, let me just show you. This is, this, the, this is, my, this is the evolution of my studio, right? I started off with nothing behind me, little graphics, and then, you know, then I put some stuff behind it there, right? You can see I'm steadily improving. And then now we have this. That's my studio now. Guys, I made these improvements, okay? O'Shea Duke Jackson didn't build this studio. I did. O'Shea Duke Jackson didn't make these improvements. I did. Oh, I'm, dude, I'm on the 460th episode of TSR Live. 
And guess what? I appreciate O'Shea giving me a platform, but I would have done this with or without him. That's all there is to it. So if he wants me to call him uh, being disloyal, O'Shea, you didn't put me on, man. You gave me a platform. I appreciate that. I'm not biting the hand that feeds you. Let's not pretend that I needed you. Listen, we needed each other. It was a mutually beneficial relationship. You paid me to do articles, and you made a boatload of money off of me. Let's not pretend that this was just a one-way studio that you gave me a handout food for the poor. I'd have got here with or without you, and you and we both know this. Um, but like I said, O'Shea didn't make me or break me. If that's what you guys want to think, if you guys want to think that he discovered me, if you want to think O'Shea is some kind of kingmaker, that's fine. I don't care. I don't. I can't control what you think. In the end, draw your own conclusions, guys. I'm not going to go back and forth. This is it. Because like I said, I'm not good at this. I'm not good at beefing with people. This is, this is not what I do. I'm good at creating content. Like I said before, man, I tried it with Turd Flinging Monkey, and I look like an idiot doing it. I suck at it. So I have no issues with O'Shea, okay? I'm not pissed at O'Shea. He is who he is. So whatever you guys conclude about me, perfectly fine. But I wanted to make sure that I laid out the facts so that you guys could hear my side of the story. If you still think I'm a coon, a sellout, or whatever, then you are going to think that no matter what I said or did, right? If this video has changed your opinion of me, or if if this has changed your opinion of me based on what O'Shea said, right? If this changes your opinion of me, listen, I appreciate that. I appreciate you being rational and reasonable. If you subscribe or you become a, a patron because of this, I appreciate your support. If you unsubscribe or you delete your pledge based on what O'Shea said about me, I hate to lose you, but listen, man, thanks for your support. You helped build this every bit as much as I did. And listen, hopefully you'll be back soon. Um, I'm sure O'Shea will probably find a way to spin this or he'll add something to what he said and come up with other things to say about me and make me look bad and all that. You know, again, listen, just based on what you've seen and heard here, it would behoove you to take what he says about me with a grain of salt. Um, so guys, listen, subscribe to OJ's channel, man. I mean, he's an excellent content creator. He's a smart guy. He has an eye for talent. He's got access to a lot of people. I'm appreciative of him for working with me. And, you know, I'm sure I'm, you know, I'm sure he feels the same way. I don't think O'Shea's a bad guy. I just think that this is who he is. Um, I didn't need him and he didn't need me. It was a mutually beneficial relationship until it wasn't. And that's okay. Nothing lasts forever. But like I said, I'm not going to do another response video, right? I've said what I've had to say. I'm not good at the beef thing. This is just not what I do. I'm good at creating content and writing articles, and that's what I'm going to do from now on. So, you know, but, but, but this is exactly what I was talking about in my last video. Why I stay silent on black issues, right? O'Shea literally, O'Shea literally fulfilled the prophecy. He went on and called me all kinds of names. And, and that's the thing, guys, all the name calling, all the dishonesty, all the lying and tearing, tearing people's down, tearing down people's brands and all that. That's why I don't speak on black issues anymore. And O'Shea can say, oh, you still speak up. Dude, O'Shea, I don't care about what you say. Dude, listen, make all the response videos and roast videos you want. Bro, make, listen, man, listen, I'm not knocking the hustle. Get your money. I'm not mad at you. Like it's like it's all good if that's what you got to do. Whatever, that's fine. That's your hustle. This is mine. Um, but like I said, man, um, I would have loved to been to have been a part of the Negro Manosphere and Black YouTube, but not anymore. That's just all there is to it. And like I said earlier, man, O'Shea seems to have been at a beat. He seems to have beef with everybody at some point. And listen, I'm sure a lot of his, I'm sure a lot of his grievances are valid. Like, let's not pretend that everyone that he's a beef with is just completely blameless. But we also have to consider the fact that he seems to be the common denominator in all of these. Right. Like O'Shea is no choir boy. And I'm sure that he would tell you that. But there is always two sides to every story. And I'm not one who's going to come on here and do response videos. But when someone is just being outright dishonest about me, I got to come on and defend myself. Um, so listen, O'Shea, listen, man, it was nice working with you. Um, and I mean this from I mean this from the heart, man. I wish you nothing but the best. I hate that things had to end like this, but it is what it is. Um, good luck with everything, man. Uh, take care of yourself and uh, much success in the future. Like Alan Roger Curry said, you're good. I'm good. So as far as I'm concerned, we're good. If you have a problem with me, you have to air those out. That's a you problem. I'm not going to address this anymore. I'm washing my hands of this. I'm moving on. We'll hopefully we'll both go on to be very successful. And, you know, we can, you know, you know, if you want to continue to bicker and all that, that's fine. I'm this, this is going to be a one-sided, this is going to be a one-sided match. O'Shea, you win. You got the better of me. You talked all the junk about me. You got people calling me names. That's cool, man. It, it is what it is. I'm just going to continue to do what I do. I'm going to put my nose to the grindstone. I'm going to continue putting out content for people to, uh, to improve their lives. Thanks for watching. on to his platform talks a bunch of shit 
and O'Shea actually likes the comment? Yes, gentlemen. Yes, this is, this is being two-faced. That is called being two-faced, gentlemen. That's exactly what that is. Where O'Shea is a sellout, is paying me to write a book entitled Black Man's Revenge. The Black Man's Guide to Dating White Girls and Non-Black Women. There you see it. Got the Negro Manosphere logo on it and everything. He paid me to write this ebook for the purposes of collecting emails. Hey guys, sign up to be on my newsletter. Get this free ebook written by Donovan Sharp. Then, maybe a year, year and a half later, he gets on a live stream roasting me and says, and I'm paraphrasing here, I had Donovan write the ebook Black Man's Revenge, and I didn't agree with any of that stuff. Go back and watch the video. He said this. He said he didn't agree with a book he paid me to write for his website. Obviously, he said this so that he could distance himself from me and my dating prefer preferences. He wanted to keep his communita card, so he said what he had to. So let me get this straight. <clears throat> let me get this straight. I just want to... <clears throat> a man you characterize as a sellout. You pay that guy to write a book that you don't agree with for the purposes of getting email addresses from your audience? Gentlemen, that is the very definition of a sellout. You are endorsing something you do not believe, his words, you are endorsing something you do not believe for personal gain. Again, that is the very definition of a sellout. You are endorsing something you do not believe for personal gain. There it is. Black Man's Revenge, the Black Man's Guide to Dating White Girls, Negromanosphere.com. We all know, we all know that O'Shea is anti-interracial dating, but he has no problem publishing a guide that not only endorses it, but encourages it and gets email addresses in return. How is that not selling out? 